Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to accomplish a very fun and interesting exercise. Here the purpose is to examine the overall form of a design object, explore its unique details and play with the right pen thicknesses. We will use a thin, medium and thick pens. In terms of the materials for this tutorial, you will need an A4 format piece of paper. I will be using a marker pad, plus you will need three black liners. One of them should be really thin. For example, I will be using 0.1 black liner from Dutch brand. Let's try and test it here on this side. You can see that it gives us really very thin almost hairline 0.1 thickness of it. The next one is Copic Multiliner and it is 0.5. By the way, it is my favorite, absolute favorite multiliner of all. And the last one, the third one, it's more like a marker. So let's call it M marker. And you can see that it gives us the thickest line. You can use any black liners, any brands, even black ink gel pens that you can find in your place right now. The idea here is to use thin, medium and thick pens to explore, to investigate and to see how different uh, thicknesses look on paper and how we can play with them. All right, so the very first lamp drawing I will accomplish by using the thinnest liner. So in my case, it is uh, it has 0.1 thickness and it is from touch. The lamp we are drawing today is the iconic fixture by the designer George Cadwardine. Its name is Tusk Lam and it was designed in 1935. It's really so helpful to start with some basic shapes and proportions. So the very first step is we want to outline the silhouette, the character of this particular object, this lamp. So we can see that it has an angle or we want to check what are the approximate proportions of its upper part to its base to the lower part and only after defining that we can switch to drawing, fine-tuning proportions to showing some details of the fixture. And please remember that, of course, you can pause the video at any point and draw in your own tempo. So no hurry. Some students of mine, they watch the entire tutorial and then they watch it for the second time and make pauses and draw uh, alongside with me. You can even select a different object, a different fixture that you really, really love. I selected this one because it's very uh, interesting in terms of uh, the design and shape. It's adjustable. Plus an interesting fact, this exact fixture was the inspiration behind the famous Pixar logo icon. All right. On to the second drawing of this fixture, which we will do by using our medium liner. In my case, it is Copic Multiliner 0.5 thickness, so it will look slightly bolder in comparison with really teeny tiny hairline of the first drawing we did. We already got ourselves familiar with the basic proportions of the fixture. So with this, in terms of second drawing, we can draw even faster. As you can see, I take the height and the proportions from the first drawing. So here I started with, with its upper part, the upper part of the lamp. It is so interesting to better investigate the design while drawing the object and I know that you will see that for the second time around you will get the design, the idea behind this lamp even better than the first time. So the first time it was kind of a first impression with the object and now we can see 
better and better the construction, the idea of the designer of this lamp. And I'm pretty much sure that with the third drawing of this same lamp, you will get yourself so familiar with this design, so you'll easily recognize it anywhere in the furniture store or somewhere on Pinterest and you will remember it forever. And the idea behind this tutorial is to examine the overall form of an object uh, as well as the unique design details of it plus exploring different pan thicknesses. So now we're switching on to the final third drawing, which we accomplish with the thickest marker or liner that we have. While drawing this third variant of the same fixture, I definitely feel more confident drawing this design and I can see that I draw this lamp, this third variation, so much faster. So the longest drawing was the first one. It took me maybe twice as much time and now it is also effortless and I'm really excited to know if you also felt this effect taking place because we remember that practice make, makes progress, practice makes perfect, right? Great, we are done with three lamps. Now we switch on to quick studies of various details, different elements of our lamp and uh, we'll be drawing them by using again different thicknesses of our liners. So I begin with the upper part of our fixture and I'm using my thickest liner even marker, I would call this uh, marker. Okay, our lampshade is a symmetrical object, that's why we can draw uh, an axis of symmetry and we can see more details, the proportions of its bottom part and the upper part, how they relate to each other. We can show the wire, we can show the outer part and some uh, little metal details like this mount for example which is adjustable and it's really interesting to explore it even more deeply. Now I'm switching to my medium size liner. This one is Copic Multiliner 0.5 and we continue drawing a new quick study of another element of our fixture. So more and more we immerse ourselves into the design, into the secrets of design behind this task lamp. Uh, as you can see it has such a unique details and it's really exciting to examine them. Plus at the same time we are examining the qualities of our thin, medium and thick liners. It's really important to understand the output of them because it will give us in future better understanding of the qualities of the liners. We will have the opportunity to add more character to our sketch to combine these thicknesses to, for example, outline, make an outline with a thicker pan and make some details and to show textures with a thin liner and you will see that this combination of lines these like play of lines will make your sketch more attractive more confident and interesting as you can see i already did a study for the base of the fixture and now i will be exploring uh, this mount, metal mount, uh, that we already done, but in slightly uh, smaller scale. So now I really want to explore all of the details. I want to show the thickness of this 
metal mount. Please notice that I switch between my uh, liners, between my pants. I use varied thicknesses, thick, thin, medium. Basically here we want to fill in the entire format. Uh, in this case a4 format piece of paper with our drawings plus as an additional bonus it trains your sense of composition and it's really really great exercise for uh, future drawings so this is a great preliminary study before drawing for example a sketch commission or some big serious interior sketch. I can say that I really love this exercise and I'm happy to share it with you because I believe that this preliminary study it trains your eye, trains your hand, it is kind of a warm-up before making a new uh, interior drawing. For example, if you would love to draw something in your house, for example, you have a fixture uh, literally in front of you right now and you are thinking about drawing it, I can give you an advice to even move around the fixture and you record what you can see from different angles, you can adjust your fixture, you can rotate it differently, differently. So this is a very interesting exploration process which is essential for any designer, any sketcher. Okay, let's also draw this interesting detail and Finally, I think I'd love to practice uh, with drawing ovals because it is so important to draw circles and ovals in interior design sketching. Let me show you how to do it quickly. So we draw uh, an axis of symmetry. We show the borders of our oval. It's always very helpful to have some guidelines and then we draw like two halves of the oval symmetrically. Here we can add some thickness. And finally, I will do a view from the side now, knowing all the details, all the design of the elements. It should be really fun. So I'll draw it here to the left. By the way, uh, the designer of the fixture, George Cadwardin, uh, he was an engineer as well and he developed an update to the industrial spring, one that not only allowed the lamp to adjust but to also stay in its adjusted position. It was like a know-how, especially for the mid of the century. Remember it was 1935 year uh, and it was the birth of the beloved task lamp that Dawn desk, desks everywhere and eventually, as I already told you, it became the troublemaking Pixar icon. Okay, meanwhile I'm almost done with this side view, like a profile view of this fixture. And of course I want to congratulate you with completing this tutorial slash exercise. I hope you enjoyed this exercise as much as I do. I really love to use it as a quick warm-up before my interior uh, sketch studies, before my big interior drawings. So like a little summary of this exercise. Here we examined the overall form of an object as well as its unique details, plus we played with the right pen thicknesses. So some fine-tuning of this side view and we are done with this tutorial. My congratulations and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye for now!